You're watching France 24. I'm Stephen Carroll. Welcome to this special coverage of breaking news from Lebanon. The country's prime minister is set to announce the resignation of the government in the next few minutes, six days after the massive explosion at Beirut's port that killed more than 160 people and left thousands injured. Hassan Diab expected to make that address to the nation, where he will say that ministers have collectively tendered their resignation. Several had already announced that they were quitting their positions before today's cabinet meeting. Now, the blast last week had provoked a fresh wave of public outrage against Lebanon's political leadership after warnings about the dangers of the chemicals at the centre of that massive blast were apparently ignored. There were big demonstrations in Beirut over the weekend. More demonstrations continuing today, as you can see in these live images from the Lebanese capital. Protesters said to clash with police and reports of tear gas being fired uh, in Beirut today. Uh, let's go first to our correspondent, Leila Malana Allen in Beirut. Leila, thank you for being with us. What are we expecting to hear from the Prime Minister when he speaks in the next few minutes? We are expecting to hear that the entire government has decided to resign after we saw that series of resignations yesterday and today. Uh, it does appear that after that meeting, they had a two-hour meeting earlier today, and it does appear that the decision was made that rather than one by one ministers resigning, and of course, once we reach more than a third, that would mean the government couldn't continue, uh, or just Prime Minister Hassan Diab resigning himself. What we are hearing from sources is the entire government uh, plans to resign instead. Of course, that can't be confirmed until we see, but that's what we know for now. What if if that does turn out to be the case? What happens technically if the prime if the government has resigned? Do they continue as caretakers? Leila, I'm going to just stop you there. Is where we see um, the Lebanese no, prime minister ready to speak. There, let's cross live to Beirut and listen to Hassan Diab, Lebanese, Lebanon's prime minister. We are still experiencing the aftermath of the disaster that has hit Lebanon, this catastrophe that has struck at the heart of the Lebanese people and was the result of long-standing corruption within the administration and within the government. It must be pointed out that corruption can be found in all administrations and in all nooks and crannies of the state. And I find that this corruption is even much bigger than the state itself. And I also found that it was impossible to face it and to get rid of it. Here are a few examples of this corruption. The explosion, the explosion that happened at the port of Beirut. This explosion, which was a real a catastrophe, but you will also find it in politics. You will find it across our country's territories, and you will find it at the very heart and in the spirits of so many people, of several classes of Lebanese society that have ruled this country or that uh, are looking to um, sow the seeds of sedition and conflict within the country for purely selfish reasons. Today, we are facing a catastrophe of incredible proportions, all the forces that want a better future for Lebanon should join forces to make a better Lebanon out of respect for the victims, for the dead, for the, their families, for the fathers and mothers, to help the population so as to allay this pain and help this country overcome the pain and the sense of loss of so many lives. 
But unfortunately, some people live in other places and at other times in history. And what they're interested in is populist discourse and attempting to destroy anything that still represents any apology for a state, any semblance of a state. These forces, these parties should be ashamed because they are the ones that created that corruption and kept fueling it and feeding it. But these are forces that are used to distorting the truth. Um, but the reality is that they are the real disaster for the Lebanese people. They, these forces, are the real catastrophe for the Lebanese people. Each time there was any attempt to end their corruption, they, find, they found a way to change the situation back in their favor. All this led to the revolution that started on the 17th of October, but they understood nothing about this revolution, which um, was led against them. They thought that again and again they could get away with lying to the Lebanese people, that they could keep on avoiding the reforms, the kinds of reforms that will rid us of this corruption, that will stop the embezzlement and defrauding of the Lebanese state and created this gap between our aspirations and the situation that we inherited. However, these forces, after our government came to power, just a few weeks after that, sought immediately to harm us, in spite of these efforts, the government worked to create a plan that would save the country. Each and every one of the members of government put in their best efforts, giving the best of them, giving it their all to creating a better future for Lebanon. None of us was pursuing selfish aims, personal aims. We have had to deal with campaigns of character assassination, um, unfair criticism, but we kept on working anyway for the good of Lebanon. However, they were not deterred and kept on again and again distorting the truth and lying. We have promised to the Lebanese people that there would be change in this country. We dreamed that this change would happen. However, we hit a wall, a thick and high wall that kept us from turning these aspirations into a reality. This wall is made up of this class of people who are capable of implementing any number of actions to keep, to maintain their grasp on this country. We have worked conscientiously, um, courageously, but we found that we were alone, and that we were faced with very many forces that were able to lead campaigns of lying, that were capable of leading actions that countered um, the progress championed by our government. We did everything we could in response to try and save this country, but unfortunately, the rot of that corruption 
blinded the country. And now we find ourselves dealing with this catastrophe and its consequences on our society, on our economy, on our population. We tried to work even harder faced in that situation in order to deal with the consequences of that situation. And today, we ask the Lebanese people and we trust the Lebanese people to bring these forces to account, these forces that have led the country to this state of corruption and destruction. We tried to walk in all honesty and transparency. We tried to create a transparent state, but unfortunately, once again, every time we tried to take a step forward, we were being pushed back one step. We led a campaign against these forces, a campaign for change. We tried to bring about the change that the Lebanese people wanted. And because we don't want to be an obstacle in the way of change, this is the reason why we have tendered our resignation. Long live Lebanon. May God bless Lebanon and um, keep it from any further catastrophes. Thank you.